bass in, in the Coquille River are found in some of the deeper pools, around the deeper pools. They really seem to like the rocky structure. Uh, we don't generally find quite as many around uh, submerged uh, vegetation like, uh, like tree roots and things. For whatever reason, they seem to like the rocks more than, than the other types of structure. Generally, the fish are in fairly shallow water, even in the deeper holes. They don't seem to be down in the very bottoms. Um, we, we find most of the fish in about five feet of water or so. You usually, generally, you want to look for some sort of structure to find these fish. They, they really like some of the larger rocks and that sort of thing. Places where you might find rocky drop-offs, that would be a good place to look for them. Yeah, you need to keep the, the points of the spear nice and sharp. These fish are not very big fish, and um, uh, it's easy not to, to uh, it's easy to, to, uh, uh, to lose the fish if you don't make a good hit on them and get, get good penetration with the spear. So it's important to keep the spear tip real sharp. Sure, so generally when I, when I spear a fish with a, with a pole spear like this, with this type of a point, uh, you know, the fish will be stuck onto this point. I'll, I'll usually swim up to it and grab the front of the point between the point and the fish. So the fish is back here uh, towards the spear. That way the fish doesn't come off the point when I'm trying to bring the fish back up and put it into my bag. I generally carry a mesh bag with me when I'm, when I'm out. This one has a few fish in it. Uh, you can open this underwater, put the fish in, close it, close the top of the bag over the fish and pull your spear out and uh, you don't lose your fish that way. As for footwear, uh, in a lot of this river, uh, the, the water is shallow enough, shallow enough that you don't necessarily need fins. So diving booties like I've got work really well. Um, some of the types of, of uh, footwear you might use for fly fishing would work fine. Um, the water socks like you find in a lot of um, local stores would be, would, be, or would be good as well. You do want some, something over your feet just to kind of protect them from the rocks and that sort of thing. When you're diving in these deeper holes, like the one that we were diving last today, uh, you'll want to use fins because you got to get down into the deeper end of the water. Uh, any type of fins will work. These are the ones that I use, um, but they're not absolutely required by any means. Yeah, so um, I usually I use a mask. Um, this particular mask is one that's kind of made for free diving. It's got a, a it's called a low volume mask, meaning that there's not a lot of space here between the, the glass and the mask and my face. And it makes it so that uh, I don't get as much pressure inside of the mask, but even a scuba diving type of a mask would work just fine for this sort of thing. Uh, you'll want a snorkel. Um, doesn't have to be as fancy as the snorkel I, that I have right now. It can be just a tube snorkel. Uh, and then you can either use a, uh, a keeper that will that will attach it to the to the strap on the mask, or you can loosen up the strap a little bit and just slide it underneath the, the strap on the mask, which is the way that I do it. You know, you're diving in a stream that has a, a flow, even though where we're diving today doesn't have very much flow. Um, but in, a, in those sections that have more flow, one of the, the most dangerous things would probably be uh, potentially getting caught under logs or around uh, vegetation that might be sticking down into the water. So it's really important to know your surroundings, uh, look ahead of you as you're being moved along in the current, and avoid any of those types of hazards. Uh, other safety issues would be um, using the spear. Uh, I've got two different types of spears here. This one is a pole spear. It doesn't shoot very far. It shoots basically the length of the pole spear. It's relatively safe for this type of this type of diving. This one's a five foot spear. This one is a spear gun, which is what people are more more accustomed to. This gun shoots quite a bit further than that, probably three times that far. And so with a gun like this, shooting in these waters, um, the poten there is a potential that uh, this thing will shoot a spear farther than you can see, given the water clarity. So you need to be able to see what's out in front of you before you shoot, and I would, re uh, I would suggest using a spear more like this for this type of, this type of diving. It's best to go out with, a, with other people, um, have at least one other person. Um, the, the, the safest way to do it would be to be close enough to each other that you can be in communication and uh, um, 
use a protocol of, of one down, one up, where one diver is down trying to spear fish, the other one stays on the surface and stays and waits there until the, the first person comes up before that person begins their dive. That way you, you always ensure that, that uh, the diver who's down is going to make it back to the surface safely. I generally don't use any flotation devices for spear fishing because uh, you need to get down in the water column to get your best opportunities at the fish. So you want to have, uh, you, in fact, I'll generally use a weight belt instead of instead of flotation so that I can get down. Uh, the weight belt that I use has this has about a six pound weight, which is really a little bit more than than I need for this for this river. I could probably do better with a four or five pound weight. Um, in order to to uh, set the weight belt up uh, best, what you want to do is you want to experiment with different weights and get find the weight that will allow you to stay on the surface and breathe without having to struggle to stay on the surface. And then when you dive, uh, as you get about halfway down to the bottom, you start to become negatively buoyant, which means that you start to sink rather than float. That way you can stay down on the bottom without having to, to work to do so and get your opportunity to spear to try to spear fish. And then at the end of your dive, you push your way up and as you start to get come up in the water column, you become positively buoyant and end up on the surface. We generally uh, carry a, a dive knife of some sort on the weight belt so that if by chance you get tangled up in vegetation or more likely fishing line, uh, the knife can be used to free yourself from that um, so that you don't get stuck down on the bottom, which obviously is dangerous. Hardened spear fishing for smallmouth bass in the Coquille River, all you need is an Oregon fishing license. Uh, if you're a resident, a resident fishing license. Uh, as far as finding access points to the river, generally uh, as you're driving up the river, you'll find pullouts on the road where people have accessed the river in the past. Um, look for trails coming down to the to the water. You want to have a nice safe place to enter the water and to get back out of the water in, in the event you need to get out of the water in an emergency. Um, the places that we were diving today are mostly um, the uh, rocky banks uh, but they're they're fairly easy places to access the water.